Welcome back to First Mount Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, the man of joy and we bless God for you that are listening in on us this morning. Certainly this is a day that the Lord has made and we come to you this morning rejoicing and being glad uh, in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. So we ask you to join in with us on this morning as we come to you from the uh, psalmist and psalm talks in Psalm 34 verses 1 through 4, seeking God in fearful times. Join us this morning in this message. Turn with me this morning 
to the Psalms writing in Psalms number 34. Psalms number 34, turn with me this morning, if you will. There you find these words, which is headed in my Bible, the Lord delivers his own. And one thing we all should know this morning, that if we're ever to be delivered from a situation, delivered from deliverance, delivered from trials and tribulation, God is truly that deliverer. Turn with me to Psalms number 34, you find these words, there's four verses of this psalm. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and that word delivered, and delivered me from all my fears, seeking God in fearful times. We pull from that fourth verse. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. My brothers and sisters, we're living in times unpredictably, unpredictably, times of which when we look at how people have and how not just have but are addressing the world. And not only the world, but the state that the world is in. Uh, we, you and I, can almost say that the majority of the world has taken on its own terms of, first of all, being safe and secure. My brothers and sisters, it's when we look at how in spite of all that has transpired, and unveiled within our very presence, the picture somehow paints that of a picture of a world which lives by faith but has no fear. Do I have a witness here? I said we're living in a world that has faith but no fear. And let me say this somehow, faith and fear must and can work together. Do I have a witness? Faith, faith and fear can work together. It may be questionable, and it may be doubtful. It, it may even be unseen and unheard of. But just as we see here today in David's addressing within this number of Psalms, David found himself in a state of fear. Am I right about it here? And it was his faith that drove him to call on God. Why did he call on God? He called on God that he might be delivered from his fear and be overcome with his faith in God. Is there anybody here that know that, that we serve a God that will come to your need when fear is overtaking your faith? I said we serve a God when it seems like we can't find a way out. We serve a God that will come to our answer when our faith is being overtaken by fear. And maybe I can maybe I can get a sanctified witness to attest to the fact that we serve a God that will come to our knees and move all of our fears when we use and exercise our faith. Do you understand that? I said, we serve a God that will move our fears when we exercise faith. Well, well, how do you see faith in comparison as to the world and the word of God? The Hebrew writer says this, that faith, that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. In order to know how if it works, tell somebody you have to every now and then exercise your faith. You have to put faith into action. Your, your faith, you, you have to work it. You have to put it to work. You, you have to exercise your faith. You have to exercise your, you have to make faith do what you know it will do. You have to exercise your faith in hard times. In times of despair, you have to exercise your faith. I'm going to write about it here. You, you have to make faith do what you want it to do. You have to exercise your faith. And if it is to ever be proven to work, you must exercise your faith, not just in times of situation. Not just when the obvious is obvious. You have 
have to exercise your faith when it seems like there's no way out of no way. You have to exercise your faith when it seems like you don't have no help at all. When it seems like the weight of the world is pressing on your shoulders, you have to exercise your faith. But as we see here this morning, as David is dealing with Abimelech and, and he's being sought after to be killed, David, this man, who was recognized as a man after the heart of God, found himself having faith, but harboring with a deeper situation of fear. David, who was a man after the heart of God, had faith and trust in God, but he found himself, and I don't care who you are this morning, every now and then you're going to find yourself in a situation where a little fear is going to come upon you, but because of your faith in God, God can move all of your faith, all of your fear, because of your faith. Do I have a witness here? Well, well, let me address the word of fear. Fear unattended to, unaddressed with you and God, who has and always will have more control over it than you will ever have. It is God that can and will handle all fears that comes our way. And this is what David is showing us this morning in this text. And you find when you read this whole, this whole passage of scriptures, when you read this number and go back to, 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 to the old, to the writing in, in, in Samuel, you'll find, you'll find where it is in the 21st chapter of 1 Samuel, you'll find that David had faith in God to overcome his fear. And let me help you out. Fear is not the fear spoken of by Solomon, where he declares that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It is not that fear that we're talking about. No, no, no. But this is fear that comes from human perspectives. This fear is the fear that arises when harm is presented to be in our forefront. It's that fear that David is facing when he pins the song. David is, is in fear of physical harm. It's not the fear of the Lord. But Solomon says in the beginning of wisdom, it's not that fear that he, that he had. It's the fear of, of life and death. David, who is the summons of this number, found himself in the presence of trouble and fear. And every now and then, if you keep living, you're going to find yourself in situations sometime that physical fear will come up. But is there anyone here that can say that when we are facing fear, that the God we serve is not too far that he can't respond? I want you to know this morning that when fear comes to you, God is near. God can respond to your fearing cry, to your fearing call. God can respond. David called on the Lord in the times of fear. And God responded. So David couldn't help but say, he said, this is not the first time. And a lot of us here this morning know that God, God has answered way more than one prayer. God has answered many prayers. And every now and then, we ought to just look back and be like David and say, I bless the Lord at all times. And his praises are continually in my mouth because of what God has done down through the years. We, we ought to recognize God for who he is. I'm going to write about it here. When, when, when we face fears, God can respond. Did not the prophet Isaiah say in chapter 55 that he's a God that's near? Have we got a witness here? And I want to let you know, if he is near, when and wherever you are and wherever you find yourself in fear, take note that God is near. Lord, help us this morning. <laughs> you ought to tell somebody God is near. God is near. God, God is near. God is near. He's close by. He, he's in fact closer than you can imagine. Or your fear will allow you to know. And Isaiah made it very clear in his writing because what he said was that even in our fears and our fearful moments, our fearful times, that we just need to call on the Lord because he's near. And he's near to handle all of our fears. I wish I had a witness in here. Can I give you a point this morning? Point number one, and you ought to tell somebody, your fear is just a crawl away from being removed. I say your fear is just a crawl away 
from being removed. And so I'm trying to encourage someone listening today to not be overtaken at whatever state of life is before you. Whatever situations are pressing upon your level of demand and supply, to not be overtaken by fear. Well, why, preacher? When I have no means, no resources to change my problem. Why, why, why? Because fear is not what God would want us to have. That's the reason. That's the reason not to be overtaken by fear. Because fear is not of God. And, and God doesn't want us to live in fear. In fact, we must know that there's more than one type of fear used in the Word of God. Can I get a witness in here? One writer broke down what can be considered as a way of looking at this word of fear from the Hebrew translation as that of, of, of Pachad and a fear of Yerah. And, and broken down in the definitive way of seeing it was that Pachad fear is that fear that is built around worries of that that could happen. It, it's a sort of irrational fear. And then there is Yerah fear. This fear that we come across when we find ourselves more in a place of reverence, a place of sacredness. It's like the fear whereby it used to be seen and how we treated the place of worship. You remember how it was, or recognized the place of worship for what it was. In other words, this fear of Yerah is that fear that carried the value of the church and the law. It used to be a time. People had a fear about how they acted in the church. People had a fear about the things they would say or do in the church. In fact, people had such a fear about the church, about the law, that when they would come across in front of the church, they would stop talking. But now, you can go and sit in front of the church and find a beer cane, cigarette butts in front of the church. Have a got a witness here? People have no reverence for the church anymore like they used to have. In other words, they don't have no fear. They don't have no fear. But what God would want us to see as people is not fear. God doesn't want us to be fearful. I'm going to write about it here. But God would want us to have an exercise in faith and not an exercise fear. I wish I had a witness in here. I said God wants us to have exercise in faith. Faith that exercises, not exercise fear, but exercise faith. And even Paul and his apostleship made fear to be that of not of what God would produce for, for the use of the child of God. You remember what it was Paul told Timothy. He said, God did not give us the spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind, making fear an exclusion to accomplish in his work. You, you can't work in fear. You just can't work in fear and accomplish what God wants us to do. And so as David brings this psalm to pen, it, it's here that David finds himself on the run. David finds himself on the run from the son of King Maoc and the king of Gath by the name of King of Kish whose name meant serpent and charmer. It was while on the run from the defeat of the accomplishments of Saul and his own accomplishments of King of Kish, recognized him through his comparative defeat of Saul with thousands, but David with 10,000. And this brought on a bit of fear. But the Bible said that David's behavior changed and he became as that of a madman and he stopped within his beard. So that King Achish would then come to ask this question, of did not y'all bring a mad man before me. And the Bible says, according to chapter number 22, in that same book, that there was an apparent breakthrough because David was free to go and continue into a cave from which he hid. But, but that's not how the story ended. And I'd suggest to you on your own time, read chapter 22, 1 Samuel, and see how faith in God can and remove every fear. Somebody need to know that God can remove fear this morning. You that's in fear this morning and haven't tried God, try God. God can take away all of your fears. And so my point to bring to this matter is that faith in God will remove all fear. David says in uh, this number, in verse number one, David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continue to be 
in my mouth. In other words, when you know who has been with you down through the years, when you know who has seen you through seen and unseen dangers, what other reasons do you need to bless the Lord? So David says, at all times, I will bless him. At all times, I will give him praise. And in verse 3, he says, come, you that know the goodness, come magnify him with me. And that is to say that one might speculate this morning while David was in the cave of the doom. And he began to resonate on the goodness of the Lord. And then he did as some of us must do. David said he sought the Lord. That is, he called on the Lord. He prayed to the Lord. And when you pray to the Lord, I want to guarantee somebody this morning that when you call on the Lord, the Lord will answer. Do I have a witness here? Uh, God heard him, and not only did he hear him, but he delivered him from his fears. Uh, and I want to encourage and I declare to you today that whatever your fears uh, may be, uh, if you call on God, uh, I want to let you know this morning that if you call on the Lord uh, in time to fear, uh, that God uh, will come to your rescue. Uh, I'm a lot about it here. Uh, only will God come, but God will come uh, and answer your call. Uh, yes, uh, just call uh, on the Lord. Uh, be sincere and call on him, uh, and he will come uh, and answer your prayer. Uh, David uh, was in the need of prayer. Uh, not only was David in the need of prayer, uh, but David was in the need of deliverance. Uh, David uh, was on the run. Uh, yes, uh, and in the midst of him being on the run, uh, David, uh, never got a witness here, uh, realized uh, how good down through the years uh, that God had been to him. Uh, and David says, uh, yes, uh, even in the midst of my running, uh, even in the midst of my fleeing, uh, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, and uh, his praises uh, are always in my mouth. Uh, yes, uh, David says, uh, yes, uh, with inside, he said, my soul uh, shall make a boast in the Lord, uh, and the humble shall hear thereof uh, and be glad. Uh, yes, uh, that's reminiscent uh, on how good God has been. Uh, Yes, uh, and then he says, uh, he said, oh, magnify the Lord uh, with me, uh, and let us exalt his name together. Uh, David uh, did not uh, make it a suffrage plea. Uh, God, yes, uh, but David brings in uh, the need for others uh, to realize uh, how good God has truly been. Uh, yes, uh, he says, uh, yes, uh, I sought the Lord. Uh, in other words, uh, I looked out uh, at the Lord. Uh, yes, uh, I called uh, on the Lord. Uh, yes, uh, I needed the Lord, uh, so I called on him. Uh, he said, I sought the Lord, uh, and he heard me. Uh, yes, uh, and when he heard me, uh, he delivered me uh, from all of my fears. Uh, I don't know about you this morning, uh, but seeking God uh, in fearful times, uh, yes, uh, is not a bad thing to do. Uh, and we're living in a time uh, of fearfulness. Uh, yes, uh, oh, yes, when we look at the world, today. Yes, uh, we see killing uh, on every corner. Uh, we see people dying. Uh, yes, uh, have we got a witness here uh, on every corner. Uh, we see trials and tribulations uh, on a high level. Uh, yes, uh, we see uh, things uh, like we've never seen before. Uh, but I want to let you know this morning, uh, whatever you're going through, uh, and whatever fearfulness uh, might be upon you, uh, seek the Lord. Uh, as I just say, uh, while he may be found, uh, because uh, he is near. Uh, seek the Lord. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, while uh, he may be found. Uh, am I right about it here? Seek the Lord, uh, and he will come to see about you. Seek the Lord while he's near. Seek God in fearful time. Don't live in fear. Don't walk around in fear. God does not want us to be fearful of anything. God wants us to be blessed. 
And I don't know about you this morning. If you're out there and you're living in fear, or if you've got a situation in your life that's causing you to be fearful, turn it over to God. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. God bless you this morning. God keep you this our prayer this morning. If you're without a church home and you're wrestling with something this morning, we advise you today and we recommend to you today. Call on the Lord. The psalmist tells us this morning that God gave him a reason to bless him for all the deliverance times that he's delivered, even in the time of, of running for your life. If he was running for his life, Amen. If he called on the Lord, and the Lord delivered him from all of his fears. God will deliver you from your fears today. I don't know what your fears are. Your fears may not be the same as mine. Mine may not be the same as yours. Yours may not be the same as someone that's in your house with you this morning. But whatever your fears are, God will deliver you from your fears if you call on him. If you're out there today without a church home, don't know the Lord for yourself. There's somebody that knows him, and there's somebody that's willing to tell you about him. The scripture says this also, that if you call upon the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. Call him, and he will deliver you from all of your problems, all of your sins, all of your troubles, all of your trials, all of your tribulations. Call the Lord if he will deliver you. God bless you. God keep you in our prayers.